Hey there, I'm Mark. Welcome into my studio. Today is a day that I've been waiting for for almost a month now, where I finally get to share with you guys on video this new version of my filament storage dry box printing system. So if you don't know the backstory behind all of this, just real quickly, I released this version of this filament storage system. It's based on these uh, cereal containers you can buy for your kitchen. Uh, I released this last August, so that's what, like eight months ago? Time flies. So anyway, uh, ever since then, you guys have, have given me a lot of great feedback about this. It honestly has gotten way more traction than I ever imagined that it would. It's been really popular. So thank you for all the support on that. Uh, it's been great. However, there have been a few things about it that I don't like as I've used it over the last several months, and I've wanted to update it and release a new version. And so a couple of months ago, I finally sat down and thought about you know the things that I'd like to change and fix about this thing, and I've updated it, and here's the new version. It's released today. So just to get the important stuff out of the way first, uh, the links are gonna be down in the video description for the listing over on printables.com, where you can grab all of the files to print these things, and there's some basic instructions for how to assemble them there at printables with some images. Um, however, what I plan to do is after this video, which is just gonna kind of introduce the system and show you all of the things that it can do, there will be uh, a playlist here on the YouTube channel with some more in-depth videos about how I recommend printing the parts for this, how to assemble you know, with, with a step-by-step -step guide, and a bunch of other stuff about the system. So if you're interested in that, make sure you're subscribed and you watch the playlist that this video is the first uh, video on that playlist because other videos will be coming very soon talking about this in more depth. But for today, what my plan is, is just to show you the old version, the new version, what's changed and improved, and some of the cool things you can do with this version, which you see here in my hands, as well as kind of on the wall behind me. Um, so that'll give you a little teaser as to what we're in for for today's video. So with all of that said, let's get right into it. All right, so this version of the container here that I showed you in the intro to the video is definitely the most fancy version of this container. It's got all the optional features and everything installed on it. So I'm gonna set this off to the side for a minute. We're gonna look at just the basic setup. This is what I call the core system. And so if you're looking on printables for the files here, there's a folder called core system, and these are all of the things that you're gonna need to print. So what this does is it basically just, you take the lid of the container. We're doing, we're building this whole container upside down. You take the lid, it's got this little round piece here that fits into the opening and presses in place nicely and seals in place there. Then it's got this base piece that fits snugly into the lid when you turn the lid upside down. And then we've got these little axle holders, which I'll slot them out here so you can see kind of what this looks like. You press bearings into these and then you press them into the axle, just like so. And then they slot down right into here like this. Now this version of it that I've got built here, I also have this little mesh cover that I've already installed. This is optional, uh, but the reason that it's here is so that you can put loose desiccant down underneath. So you can see here, you can see your desiccant nicely, which in the older version of the container, you couldn't very easily because it was hidden inside of this little round enclosure. Um, so now ni the nice thing about this is you can flip this upside down and you can see if your color changing desiccant has changed color to let you know that it needs to be replaced. So that's a nice thing about that. But if you don't want to use desiccant in your bins, you can just leave this little cover out and that works fine as well. So that's the, the lid of the bin, which is the base of the, of the container. And then all you need to do is drill a hole in the container in this spot. There's a little tool jig. I don't have it sitting around here, but it's there's an STL for it. You can download off of the um, printables listing that helps you line this thing up. So you place it down here along the base and it's got a hole here to show you where that hole should go. And then you just screw it into this little coupler nut that's on the back side of this. And that's all that is required for the lid. There's some other stuff we can add to this later, but this is the basics. And so now we can take our roll of filament and you wanna place it with the filament coming off the roll down at the bottom here, so bottom front. And then we can just manually feed this through the hole here grab it on this side so it doesn't escape, and then you just put this down over the top and clip it shut. And so now we can print just fine, and then when we're done printing, you can put this cap, there's a hole in the cap that's just the right size for filament to kind of fit in there nice and snug, and so then we can push the excess back into the uh, opening here, 
and just push this cap in place. So that helps it to be airtight when you're not using it. And then when you're, when you're ready to use it again, you pull this off, the filament comes with it, and then you can pull the rest of it out and you know run it through your Bowden tube to your printer and then clip the tube in there and you're good to go. So that is the basics of the new system. One of the things that, well, a couple of the things that I like about this as improvements over the old system. Uh, first of all, on the old system, the outlet up here for the filament was up top. And so if you can imagine, especially when you got down near the end of the spool of filament, with it coming off the top like that, it would have a tendency to get pulled up off the rollers, right? So it would pull up like this and run into the front of the container. And several of you had reported that as being an issue, and I noticed it as well, with especially these lighter weight pla uh, uh, cardboard spools when they started running out of filament. So the nice thing is now we're, we're running this off the bottom, right? So the, the force of this pulling out is always going to be pulling this down and against the rollers. So at least in my testing so far, that's really solved that problem of uh, the almost empty spools, you know, causing issues with binding up. The other thing is these rollers now are full width of the container, whereas before they were kind of this here, I'll open this and show you guys. They were this kind of offset thing, right? So while they fit this spool just perfectly, if you had a very narrow spool, and I have an example over here, this uh, filamentum ABS that I have here came on a very narrow spool. This was too narrow to fit here. It would, it would run into where the bearings were. Whereas now with this full width uh, axle design there, you know, it's, it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna slide back and forth a little as it rolls, but that seems to be fine in all of my testing and it, uh, it fits perfectly. And then just as a comparison, this is my widest spool. Uh, this is atomic filament. They use these wide kind of chunky plastic spools and this one just barely fits on here as well. So the fit is tight and when you put the lid on it, it seems like it's maybe a little tight but it rolls just fine again in, with my testing so far. So these are all the different sizes of spools that I've tested. Of course I'm sure there are many more out there that you guys might have. So if you run into issues with spool fit definitely let me know and we can work on you know making tweaks to this design to try to make it work with as many different spools as possible. All right, so there are a couple of options that you got with this basic setup. And I'm gonna move this old version out of the way so that we're not distracted by that. Um, a couple of the most basic options you've got is there's a hygrometer holder that you can print. So this little square or rectangular hygrometer snaps here into place. And all this does, it's got a little hexagonal opening here. So you just press it over the inside of that coupler nut. Then you've got your hygrometer sitting inside of your container. So you can keep track of the humidity in there. And also there's a tag holder. Now these tags are the same as with my old system. So if you've got some of those already, if you've been using the old system, you can just reuse the tags. Uh, but this slides here into the holder, snaps in place. And then you can put this over the little coupler nut that goes on the outside. So when you slide this in place, now you've got a label to help you remember what the filament is that's inside the container. So that is the core system. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the basics of it. Now there are some additional fancier options that we can get to over here with the extended system. So let me get things rearranged and I'll show you what those things are all about. All right, so we took a look at what I'm calling the core system. And this is the extended version of the system. Now this is basically the same as this, as far as everything down here, the base and the rollers and all that is exactly the same. Well, what the extended system adds is basically four big parts. And I've made them optional and separate because you might not always need these. I use them in most of my setup. You can see all the ones back here behind me have these parts. Um, but depending on your situation, you might not need them. And they do require quite a bit of extra plastic to print, right? Because they're bigger and chunkier than everything else we've printed so far. Um, but let's take a look at what these four parts are. And then I'll tell you kind of the different things that the extra features that they add um, that I think are, are really, really useful. So the way this works is there's these two bracket parts on the inside of the container and then two parts on the outside. The two on the inside are the same part. You just print two copies of it. The front and the back on the outside here are separate parts because they're designed specifically to fit on the top of this container. Um, so you press those into place. You do have to mark and drill four holes. So there's two in the top here, one in the front, one in the back 
to hold these in place. And you screw through those holes with M3 screws and there's M3 hex nuts on the inside pressed into place here to hold those in place. So these are screwed through the container into this and they're very sturdy. They're not going anywhere, which is important for the wall hanging feature that we'll take a look at in a second because you don't want these falling off. Um, so it is a bit more work. To install these, you, you have to drill holes and do all of that. But once you get them in place, here are the features that they allow you to add. So first of all, let me lock this back in place here because I wanna show you that the flat platform up here on top allows for stacking, right? So there's these little kind of cutout shapes here in the top and what they're designed to do is match up with the underside of a different container. So I can put this on here and it, it stacks like I can slide it here. I, I hope you can see that it really does sit in there nice and perfectly. Um, now, actually, I have a few more of these over here. So over in the corner of my studio, I have things like this and they're stacked like four or five high in a couple of spots. And they're again, still nice and sturdy and they're gonna work fine. So for those of you who are asking for stacking, I know there were a few of them, of, of you with the old system that had asked about stacking. We have that now and it works really, really great. So that's that. On the back side of this piece here, there's this little kind of cutout. And what this is designed to do is it works with these little slide pieces. Now these weren't designed by me, these were designed by uh, somebody who goes by Cal's Tech Concepts on printables. So I've linked to that over in my printables listing as well. Thanks to them for um, designing these things. This one is specifically designed for my Scatus pegboard. So this slides into the pegboard and then this slides onto the back of here like so. There are versions of this for honeycomb storage wall uh, to mount to 2020 extrusions. Uh, I think there's a version you can just screw directly into the wall as well if you want. And so there are versions of this that should work with just about any kind of wall storage system that you have. And then the nice thing is once those are in place, I've got one right there on my pegboard. I can just slot this in place like so. And so this is where I hang my filament that's currently being used by my big Voron printer here. This uh, just goes in there like this Bowden tube goes right like so, and it feeds around into the printer. And then of course, all five of those over there for my Prusa MMU system are just attached to the wall. And it's nice because it makes it real easy to slide one off and slide a new one on when I want to load a new filament into my MMU over there. So that setup is working really well for me, the wall mounting. Um, the next thing that this does is that the curved inner side here, um, these two brackets have kind of these curved bits, they help with filament management as you push filament back in. So whether you're manually reloading filament and pushing the excess back into the system, or uh, like this MMU, you know, forcibly feeds the filament back in as it loads and unloads filament, um, there's a tendency if you're just Having a, if you have a plain version like this, for the filament to be pushed back in and for it to jump off the edges of the, of the spool to one side or the other, and then the next time you pull it back out, it'll tangle. Um, so what these things do is they prevent, to, to the best of my ability so far, and in my testing it's been pretty good, they prevent that filament from jumping off the sides. So you can see probably, um, especially with these white colored filaments here, you can see these kind of loose um, winds that have been created by the MMU pushing the filament back in, uh, but those are not gonna tangle because they're still within the bounds of the spool. And the next time we load that filament, it'll just pull those tight again and we'll be good to go. So there's still no active rewinding system, at least that I've designed here with this just yet. Um, if, you're in, if you have an idea of something that would fit in, into this footprint that would be an active rewinding system, definitely let me know. That might be something we look at in the future, uh, but for now, just having these little guides has helped a lot with keeping the filament on track. Um, and I've run through multiple full spools um, with that setup and with my manual setup here without any tangles or issues. So that's been really good. Uh, and then I think the final thing that these extended pieces allow is you can see there's a slot up here at the top for the filament tags, right? So I showed you with the simple system, we have this little tag holder that can fit right there um, to, uh, to you know, label your filament, but these same tags will slide just right down into here. So you can do that instead of having this separate tag holder. And then also it's got this little clip. So when you're not using the coupler cap, 
um, I was losing these. There was nowhere for me to put them when when the pr uh, when the filament was loaded into my printer, right? So there's this little clip here now, and you can clip that there, and that'll hold that in place. So no more lost coupler caps, and I, I like that feature a whole lot. It's been super helpful. You can see up here, all five of those have their caps attached right like so. All right, so that is the extended system. Now, I haven't mentioned it yet, but all of the parts that I print for the inside of these containers, I've been printing in ABS or ASA. Um, the two parts here on the outside, I've just been printing in PLA for two reasons. One, because it's cheaper, and two, because I can print them over here on my Prusa non-enclosed printer while I'm printing the ABS parts over here. So it just helps to save time to print these faster. Um, but these don't need to uh, be able to withstand higher temps. The ones inside do, at least for my setup, because the other thing that I've done is I've created an active drying adapter for this thing, right? So I can pull this off of the bottom here and I can grab this, which is the drying base for the Polymaker poly dryer system. Um, so this comes with its own containers. Um, and you can use those if you want, but I wanted to use it with my containers. And so I've got this printable piece. It's big and chunky, takes a while to print, but once you've done it, you only have to do it once. Um, and this fits right on the top of here, nice and snug, and then it adapts. So this little circular hole now just goes in the bottom of here. So I can slot this on here, press it down. It seals nice and tightly. Um, I can set this for whatever temperature and duration that I need to dry whatever kind of filaments inside run that through its dry cycle, and it dries the filament and also refreshes the desiccant in there. It's gonna take me probably two hands to pull this off because it does slot on there fairly tightly. There we go. So when it's finished, you pull that off, you pop this back on to seal everything shut, and I've been able to get you know the humidity down to really good levels, somewhere between 10 and 15% on most of my spools, and it will stay that way for a really long time once you've got everything sealed up. So I think that is everything I wanted to show you in this video. Now, if you start to use this system and you have questions or comments or run into issues, um, first of all, check to see if the other videos that are coming later in this playlist are out. They'll show in a lot more detail how to print and how to assemble and all of that kind of stuff for these parts. Um, but. If, if those aren't there yet, or if you've got other questions, you can leave them on uh, as comments on this video. You can find me over at Printables, leave me a message there. Um, or if you have a longer form discussion that you'd like to have about an idea or a problem or whatever, um, I do have a Discord for my YouTube community. I'll leave a link to an invite uh, to that Discord down in the description on this video as well. You can jump in there and I've added a filament storage channel in that Discord. You can um, talk to me there uh, about you know, any issues or ideas or, or whatever that you want to talk about related to this system. So with that said, I hope this is helpful. Uh, I hope that as you start using this, uh, if you, like I said, run into problems or have ideas, you reach out. I plan probably for the next month or so at least um, to be making small adjustments to some of these parts as we test them more as a community. I know you guys certainly have different types of filament, different size spools, all of that kind of stuff compared to what I use here. So we may run into issues where I've got to resize things a little bit or make a few changes to accommodate more and more different types of filament and spools and make this thing work really well. So when I make those changes, uh, the listing at printables, all of those STLs will always be the latest version. So I'll update versions there as needed. And I will leave a little uh, message at the bottom of the description over there at printables as well, date stamped with any changes that we've made to any of the STLs going forward. So that'll be your official repository of the latest and you know an official list of, of any changes or updates that we've made to the system. Uh, with that said, I hope that you uh, have fun using these things. They've been great for me so far in the month and a half or so of testing that I've that I've done with them, especially over there with my MMU having those things hanging on the wall and not having to use the dumb buffer that comes with the Prusa MMU system, just being able to unload the filament straight back into the containers and not have tangles, super helpful. So anyway, let me know how these things work for you. Uh, I hope they work well. I, I think that they will. I'm super happy with this as compared to the older version. Uh, it's just so much better in a lot of different ways. So with that said, I hope you go uh, build some of these and print awesome things with them. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.